Welcome to the World Storytelling Cafe. My name is Deborah Weller, and I'm a storyteller who lives in St. Augustine, Florida, in the United States of America. And I have some stories and songs for you today, and I will invite you to participate as we go along. <laughs> about spring. It's about a rabbit. And the name of this story, A Poor Quatail, is How Rabbit Lost His Tail. At one time, Rabbit was a glorious creature, furry with ears that stuck up, little paws that allowed it to prance about in strong back paws that could help it to leap. But on this very day, the thing that Rabbit was most excited about was a long fluffy tail. And that long fluffy tail would keep him occupied for hours admiring himself. Oh, I love my long fluffy tail. Well, one day, Rabbit went out for an adventure. And as Rabbit was prancing along, prancing along, a bobcat was watching the rabbit. Yes, the bobcat was watching the rabbit. The bobcat was positioned with eyes that only looked here or there or straight ahead find its prey. And Rabbit came bouncing along, bouncing, 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 until Bobcat leaped up and pinned Rabbit on to the ground with its powerful claws. And there was Rabbit looking up at Mr. Bobcat. Oh, Bobcat, 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 you have me pinned to the ground. Bobcat, Bobcat, please look at me. I'm the skinniest little rabbit around. You don't want to eat me. I'm hungry. I'll meet anyone. You can't stop me. Oh, I beg of you, please, to let me go. And if you let me go, I will find for you the biggest turkey that you could imagine. And then you could have that for your meal, Bobcat. A turkey? You wouldn't trick me, would you? Oh, no, Bobcat. I won't trick you. I won't trick you at all. Trust me. So Bobcat lifted his claws from the rabbit and rabbit long tail. Checked on that tail first. And then looked the Bobcat in the eye and said, Here's what I need you to do, Bobcat. I need you to lay down upon the earth with your paws up in the air. And I need you to act like you're dead. Totally dead. Now when I bring that fat turkey back to you, then you can say to me, in a loud voice so that the turkey can hear. Jump up and catch the biggest. Yes. I don't want to say it. Well, then I'll say it for you and that'll be your signal, okay? Well, the bobcat agreed and laid down and played dead. 
And off went Rabbit with that nice fluffy tail. And Rabbit went looking here and looking there, hoping to find some turkeys because he wasn't even sure if he'd find them. Well, he came into a clearing and there in that clearing was a whole flock of turkeys. And they were all gobbling about. And Rabbit went right into the center of their gathering and with that long fluffy tail began to jump about. The bobcat's dead! The bobcat's dead! The bobcat's dead! The bobcat's dead! And all the turkeys stopped. Yes, that's what I said. The bobcat's dead, turkeys. How will we know? How will we know? How will we know? Uh, come and follow me, and I will show you where he lies dead on the ground. So the turkeys all lined up behind Rabbit with his fine tail. And turkeys marched along. Go, 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 Finally, they came to that very place where the bobcat was laying dead in the road. And he looked very convincing. Rabbit came up and gave him a little kick, and the bobcat didn't even flinch. See, see, the bobcat's dead, the bobcat's dead, the bobcat's dead. And the turkeys formed a circle around the dead bobcat, and they started to prance. Go, 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 go. And Rabbit thumped upon the ground to keep the beat. And he started going faster. And those turkeys went faster and faster and faster. Go, 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 Until they were dizzy. And at that point, the rabbit called out, the bobcat's dead, the bobcat's dead. And then he said, jump up and catch the biggest. Bobcat pounced and he caught the biggest turkey. It took a few moments for the other turkeys, all dizzy, to realize what had happened. But when they did, they turned upon Rabbit with the long, swishy tail. And Rabbit realized now the gig was up. And he was the target for all of those turkeys. And Rabbit started to run out into the field with those turkeys following behind him. Oh, you tricked us! Oh, you tricked us! And Rabbit went here, and Rabbit went there, and Rabbit went all different directions until at last he saw a hole. And he leaped down into that hole, but that long, fluffy tail didn't quite fit. And one of those turkeys was right nearby waiting. And as Rivet, Rabbit went down into the hole, the turkey clasped on to the rabbit's tail. And Rabbit was down into the hole, and Rabbit twisted this way, and Rabbit twisted that way, and twisted and twisted until finally the Rabbit slid free. But as Rabbit went down into the hole, at last free, Rabbit turned around. Where's my tail? Where's my tail? Rabbit no longer had a long fluffy tail. No, now Rabbit only had a tiny little stubby tail. And that's why from that day to this very one, rabbits only have short
fluffy tails. And now I would like you to join me in a song. And I'll need your help because I'm playing the guitar and I won't be able to do all the hand movements, but you will know what to do. Everybody clap your hands. a Norwegian folk tale and it is called The Talking Pot. I will skip season for them. Now they had no crops to harvest, only a few potatoes and peas for themselves, and they brought those in, but now they were very worried, and the man and the woman sat down at their table and looked at one another and said, what are we going to do? And then the man got a bright idea. Dear, I've got a great idea. Why don't we sell our fine fat cow and that should get us enough money to last through this drought season. The woman thought for a moment and said, well, our cow is neither fine nor fat. Don't worry, somebody will wonder. She still makes good milk. How oh, but we won't have her milk then. But we've got chickens and we have another cow, so I think we'll be fine to last through this drought. And the woman agreed. And so the man went out into the barn and he put a harness upon his fine, fat cow, which was neither fine nor fat. And he harnessed her, and then he led her down the pathway toward the town. On their way there, in the middle of the path, was a wee tiny man. He didn't look like other people in the village, why he had a pointed hat upon his head, and it was made of deer skin, and he had antlers coming out of his head as well. And this wee tiny man was carrying under his arm a common black three-legged pot. The little man reached out and said, Hello, stranger! Hello, stranger! I see you have a cow! And the man said, why, yes, I do. It's my fine fat cow and I'm taking her to market to sell her this day. I'd be interested in your cow for sure, said the little man. But I need money. Have you a fathering or more to pay me? Ah, no, no, but you see, I have this black three-legged pot and perhaps you'd like it. Oh, no, I don't need another black three-legged pot. We have plenty of them. Why should I buy it? Aha, uh -huh. this pot, <laughs> it's a magic pot. Come on over here, give it a little pat and you'll find out. So the man came over and gave the pot a little pat 
And sure enough, the pot began to sing. Talking pot? Whoa, that is magical indeed. Why, yes, yes, I will trade my fine fat cow for your talking pot. And they agreed, no money exchanged. The little man took the harness of the cow and led her down the path, and in a moment they vanished, nowhere to be seen. The man was left with a black three-legged pot. He decided he would surprise his wife. So on the way home, he whistled a tune and was so happy to have his little pot. He got to his barn and he hung it on a hook and he went inside to surprise his wife. She was waiting. He came into the door. And he looked at her and said, Dear, such good news. The woman said, Well, where's the money? Show me the money. You must have sold our fine fat cow. Oh, dear. Much better news than that. Where is the money? You were going to sell this. Where is the money? You know we need the money. <laughs> dear, I've got a much better bargain. A much better bargain? Come on, dear, out into the barn, and I will show you this surprise. The woman was very skeptical, and she followed her husband out into the barn. And when they came into the barn, he just pointed to the black three-legged pot. A black three-legged pot? Have you gone mad? We have plenty of black three-legged pots. How is that going to help us in this time of need? What have you done, my good husband? Uh, all you have to do is uh, go over to the pot and touch it. It's a magic pot. A magic pot! You've gone crazy indeed. But the woman went over and touched the magic pot and it began to sing. dancing all around and singing. was making a fine pudding. When she saw the pot, she said, oh, just what I need for my fine pudding. And she picked it up and put it on the counter. And she cracked eggs. And she poured in sugar and fresh cream. And she began to stir the pot. And as she was prepared to put it away in the cabinet to set, that little pot slipped out of her hands, jumped onto the floor, and started out her door and she said, stop, you're taking all of my pudding. And the little pot said, it's not yours for long. I'm bound for the home of the poor man's house. Away I go a skipping. I'm bound for the home of the poor man's house. Away I go a skipping. And it went right back to the poor man's house. It set itself on the table. The man and his wife came in from the fields, and when they saw what the pot had, oh, 
pudding? It is a magic pot indeed. They got spoons and began to taste the delicious pudding. This is the best pudding we've ever had. And they tasted it and tasted it and then they cleaned the pot, shined the pot, set it on the fire. They read for a while and then they went to bed. The very next morning when they came down, the pot was dancing on the kitchen floor and it began to sing. I will skip, I will skip. season and all the wheat had been gathered in from the fields and the threshers were there threshing the wheat and they saw the pot and said oh just what we need for all of the wheat and they put the pot in the middle and they scooped and they scooped all the wheat into the pot until at last it was brimming full and the little pot began to scoot out the barn door and they all called out, stop, you're stealing our wheat. And the little pot sang, but it's not yours for long. I'm bound for the home of the poor man's house. Away I go, a skippy. I'm bound for the home of the poor man's house. Away I go, a skippy. And off down the road it went right to the poor man's house. And when it got back to their house, the man and woman came inside and they noticed all the wheat and said, oh, wheat, we'll be able to make bread for a lifetime and more, but it's way too much just for us. And so they parceled it out to their neighbors who were also suffering from the drought and kept just what they would need. They cleaned the pot, they shined the pot, and they put it on the fire. And that night, they had a meal of eggs and fresh bread. And then they went to sleep, and in the morning when they came down, the pot was dancing again and began to sing. I will skip, I will skip. man in his counting house, counting all of his gold. I love my gold. Ah, pieces of gold glimmer. And then he saw the pot. Oh, just what I need for my gold. He picked up the pot and put it right there. And he scooped and he scooped and he scooped until all of his gold was inside of that pot. And just as he went to lock it away in the cabinet, that little pot slipped out of his hands, jumped onto the floor and out the door. Stop your feet, you're stealing all my gold. I'll make you pay back every last father and more. But the little pot was on his way. It's not yours for long. I'm bound for the home. right into 
the front doors and was sitting in a foyer which had a curving staircase going up to the next level. The rich man looked over the banister and saw that talking pot and ran down the stairways. There you are, you thieving scoundrel! You've stolen all of my wife's pudding. You've stolen all of my wheat. And you've stolen all of my gold. I will make you pay it back every last farther and more. And with that, the man grabbed hold of the little pot. And bless my soul, if that little pot was standing so still, but the man's hands stuck fast. And he pulled and he tugged and he pulled and he tugged. But no matter what, he couldn't free his hands. And so the little pot began to sing. I will skip, I will skip. And the man in his anger said, Then skip to the North Pole! <laughs> That's exactly what the pot did out the front door with the man holding on. And he went over the hills and down the dales. And they say that even to this day, if you look on the horizon, you just might see the shadow of a black three-legged pot with a man holding on behind it. I will skip, I will skip. How far will you skip? Up the hill and down the dale and into the rich man's house. Well, now it is time to have another little song. For you see, story stretches are very important when we listen to stories. And on this one, I want to teach you a little rhythm. And it goes like this. So what you want to do is slap your thighs to keep the rhythm. Oh, knickerbocker, knickerbocker, number nine. Oh, knickerbocker, knickerbocker, feeling fine. Now show me the rhythm of your hands. Now show me the rhythm of your hands. Oh, knickerbocker, knickerbocker, number nine. Oh, knickerbocker, knickerbocker, feeling fine. Now show me the rhythm of your thighs. Now show me the rhythm of your thighs. Now show me the rhythm of your hands. Now show me the rhythm of your hands. Oh, knickerbocker, knickerbocker, number nine. Oh, knickerbocker, knickerbocker, feeling fine. Now show me the rhythm of your tongue. Now show me the rhythm of your tongue. Now show me the rhythm of your thighs. Now show me the rhythm of your thighs. Now show me the rhythm of your hands. Now show me the rhythm of your hands. Oh, knickerbocker, knickerbocker, number nine. Oh, knickerbocker, knickerbocker, feeling fine. Now show me the rhythm of your head. Ding dong. Now show me the rhythm of your head. Ding dong. Now show me the rhythm of your tongue. Now show me the rhythm of your thighs. Now show me the rhythm of your thighs. Now show me the rhythm of your hands. Oh, knickerbocker, knickerbocker, number nine. Oh, knickerbocker, knickerbocker, feeling fine. The next story that I want to tell you today is a Jewish folktale. And it has many different versions, but this one is called Too Much Noise. And I need your help. Can you cluck like a chicken? Can you bray like a donkey? Can you moo like a cow? 
Can you make the leaves go swish, swish, and the tea kettle go hiss, hiss, and a bed go ree? That's what I need you to do in this story. Isaac was a good man. He lived in a tiny cottage that had a barn outside, and he had just what he needed, a bed for sleeping, a stove for cooking, a fireplace to warm him, and a sink and a bath for cleaning. And out in the barn, he had just a few chickens, all that he needed in his simple life. Now Isaac ate his dinner one night, and he changed into his pajamas, brushed his teeth, and laid down on his creaky old bed. As he put his head on the pillow, the leaves outside the window went swish, swish. The tea kettle went hiss, hiss. And his bed went creak, creak. And Isaac tried to sleep, and he tried to sleep, and he tried to sleep. But all night long, he tossed and turned. In the morning, he thought he should go to the wisest man in the whole village, the rabbi. So he ate some breakfast, washed his face, dressed into his clothes, opened his door, closed his door, and headed off to town. And he came to the rabbi's home and knocked upon the door. And the rabbi opened the door and said, Isaac? What is it that you would need this day from me? Rabbi, you're the wisest man in all the village. I can't sleep. The leaves outside my window go swish, swish. The tea kettle goes hiss, hiss. My bed goes creak, and I can't sleep. What should I do? Isaac, here's what I recommend as the wisest man in all the village. On your way home, stop and get yourself a cow. A cow? Okay, Rabbi, thank you. The Rabbi closed the door and Isaac went back and stopped at one of his friends' barns and said, may I borrow one of your cows? I'll, I'll bring it back soon. But the Rabbi said, I, I, I need one in order to get better sleep. And so the man gave him a cow and he led the cow to his house and pushed it inside and patted it gently. And Isaac made himself a little meal, some toast and soup. When the meal was finished, he washed his face, brushed his teeth, changed into his pajamas, and he said good night to the cow. He laid down and he tried to sleep. The leaves outside the window went swish, swish. The tea kettle went hiss, hiss. His bed went creak. And the cow went moo, moo. All night long, Isaac turned and twisted and tried to sleep, but nonetheless, sleep never came. When he woke up in the morning, he put the cow out into the barn and cleaned up the mess left. And he said, this is not good. He ate his breakfast, brushed his teeth, put on his clothes, left his house and went back to see the rabbi and knocked upon his door. Rabbi, the cow, it didn't help. The leaves outside the window went swish, swish. The tea kettle went hiss, hiss. My bed went creak. And the cow went moo, moo. All night long. Have I, what am I going to do now? Ah, oh, Isaac, I see. On your way home, stop and get a chicken. A chicken? Yes, I'm the wisest man in the village, so please get a chicken. Thank you, Rabbi. And on his way home, he stopped at another friend's and asked, may I borrow one of your chickens? I'll bring her back soon. Rabbi says, I need it. He's the wisest man in all the village. 
So he carried that little chicken back and brought the cow in the house and the chicken in the house, made himself a little meal, waited a while and read, cleaned up his dishes, washed his face, brushed his teeth, put on his pajamas and laid down in his bed, hoping now he would get a good night's rest. But as he put his head on the pillow, the leaves outside the window went swish. The tea kettle went hiss, hiss. His bed went creak, creak. The cow went moo, moo. And the chicken went <laughs> all night long. He tossed and turned and tried to sleep, but alas, there was no sleep coming. This time, he got out of bed in the morning and led the cow and the chicken out into the barn and cleaned up all the mouse inside. He made himself breakfast. <laughs> he didn't even change into his clothes. I have to go see the rabbi, this is not working. He opened his door and closed his door and marched off to the rabbi's house and he knocked on the door. And the rabbi came, ah, Isaac, you don't look so well today. You're still in your pajamas. <laughs> it's not working. Leaps outside the window and swish, swish, tea kettle with his, his. The bed went creak, creak. The cow went, <laughs> and the chicken went, <laughs> all night long. Rabbi, I didn't sleep. Hmm. I see, I see. What you need now is a donkey. A donkey? Yes, I'm the wisest man in all the village. Go get yourself a donkey. Thank you, Rabbi. You stopped at a friend's farm. May I borrow your donkey, Rabbi says. I need it so I can sleep better. He harnessed the donkey and brought it to his house and put the donkey in his house and the cow in the house. And the chicken in the house made himself a little meal of some mashed potatoes and some carrots. He ate his dinner. He didn't even brush his teeth. He was so exhausted. He was still in his pajamas, so he didn't even have to change. He laid down in his bed, pulled the covers up. And then the leaves outside the window went swish, swish. The tea kettle went his, his bed went creak, creak. The donkey went meow, The cow went moo, moo. And the chicken went look, 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 look. all night long. He tossed, he turned, he tossed, he turned. And alas, as soon as the sun was up, he jumped out of bed. Didn't even eat breakfast. He took the cow and the donkey and the chicken out. Cleaned up all the mess. Headed to the rabbi. This time feeling quite angry. Bum, bum, bum. The rabbi opened the door. Isaac, your eyes are red. Your hair is disheveled. Did you not sleep? I didn't. Have a, it was awful. I didn't sleep at all again. It's been three long nights of no sleeping. What should I do now? And the rabbi said, Get rid of the donkey, get rid of the cow, get rid of the chicken, and see if that works. We just took. I am the wisest man in all of the village. I say, do as I say. Thank you, Rabbi. The door was closed. He shuffled all the way back. He went out into the barn and he took the donkey back to his friend. Came back, got the cow took it to the other friend and carried the chicken back and thanked his friends. He could barely stay awake. He had a little soup for dinner, looked at himself in the mirror. He was a mess, but he wanted to sleep so badly. And so he laid down and the leaves 
felt like the window went swish, swish, and the tea kettle went hiss, hiss, and his bed went creak, creak. And do you know? Isaac slept soundly in his own bed that Too much noise. It's great to tell stories, and I thank you for this opportunity that I have had to be with you with the World Storytelling Cafe, and maybe you'll try and tell some of your own stories in your home. And now, a goodbye song. storytelling in your home. There's always a story to tell or ask a grandma or a grandpa to tell you a tale. And what you have to do is maybe look at a picture and remember a happy time or find a sad time in your heart that you need to share. Stories are everywhere and you can be telling them too. A story, a story, I give to you. Take some home and bring some back to me. I'm Deborah Weller, storyteller, and I live in St. Augustine, Florida. I'm a member of the Florida Storytelling Association and the president of the Tale Tellers of St. Augustine. I hope you're enjoying all the stories that are here on the World Storytelling Cafe. Thank you for this opportunity to be your storyteller today.